send a notice out to everybody. cover it. There we go. Okay. Okay, we are live. Sorry for the delay, everybody. So, let's have a care time. We're going to continue with our reading of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, and today, of course, is the celebration of Hera Panchmi, but we talked about that at least three other times. Uh, that's when the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, attacks the servants of Lord Jagannath. Uh, during the fifth day after, or the fifth day of the Rathi Atra. That's why it's called Hera Panchami, because she's very jealous. And I'm not going to talk any more about that. We had classes about that at least three times, and this morning we had another class. Okay. Let's chant a little bit. Shri Krishna Jai Ram Nam 
Tela Sitashi Shimad, His Divine Grace, Avaya Tanana, Ravata Vananda, Gosami Marishila Prabhupad Gijai, Iskan Founder Acharya, Shila Prabhupad Gijai, Anantakoti Vaishnav Vrind Gijai Namacharya, Shila Hila Stakur Gijai, Prem Se Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda Shidwaita Gadadha Shiva Siddhi Gol Bhakta Vrindiki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopanath Saim Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Go Vrindiki Jai Vrindavanam Ki Jai Maturavan Ki Jai Jagadatha Sami Ki Jai Yunamai Ki Jai Shimadi Lassi Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakta Vrindiki Jai Gaur Premananda Hari Hari Gol all glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is to Shri Guru and Gauranga. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya. Putle Srimati Bhakti Padanta Swami. Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Vele. Gauravani Bhajani. Nirishesha Shanyavani Pasyacha Vejatani. So I'm going to read the translation. When the rising sun appeared in the east, the jewel of the twice-born Lord Gauranga awakened. Gathering his devotees around him, he set out to preach in the countryside, towns, and villages. Tatai, tatai, sound of the Murdanga drums, and the cymbals chimed in time. Lord Gorasunder's shimmering golden features danced, and his ankle bells jingled. Mukunda Madhava Yadava Hari chanted the devotees, their mouths filled with the vibrations. Calling out, they preach to those still sleeping. Hmm. You spend your nights uselessly sleeping and your days decorating your bodies. Although you have achieved a rare human birth, you do not care for this precious gift. Instead, you refrain from serving the darling of Yashoda and slowly fall through your last moments to death. With every rising and setting of the sun, a day passes and is lost. Why then do you remain idle and not serve the Lord of the Heart? This life is temporary and full of various miseries. Take shelter of the holy name as your only business. To penetrate the darkness of ignorance and bless everyone's heart, 
The sweet holy name has risen like the shining sun. Wow. Drink deeply the pure nectar of Krishna's holy name, which is the life and soul of Bhakti Virod. The holy names aside, there's nothing to be had in all the 14 worlds. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai. So, Omagana Timiranda Shah Gananjana Shlakaya Chakshur Un Meditam Yena Tazmai Shigaravedamaha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master, his divine grace. A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who so kindly opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge while I was blinded in the darkness of ignorance. Okay. Without Prabhupada, we would not know anything about Krishna, anything about the absolute truth, nothing about the soul, nothing about karma, nothing about reincarnation, nothing about the time factor. We would know basically only of vidya. Vidya, of vidya means ignorance. So, you know, we'd be expert in ignorance. <laughs> so, Srila Prabhupada Gijaya. So let's go on to the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. We're on the 13th chapter of the Anjalila, reading more about Jagadananda Pandit's activities. Okay. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda I'm just getting it set up. I didn't have it set up before. It's just one second. And then we'll share the screen. Alright. There we go. Usually I have it set up beforehand. Okay. So, here we go. So we are reading from this 13th chapter by Jagadananda. Let me explain a little bit what went on before. The Jagadananda Pandit had been sent by Lord Shaitani Mahaprabhu to Jaga, uh, to Vrindavan, but to reside with Sanatana Goswami, so the Jagadananda Pandit wouldn't find fault in the residence of Vrindavan, because the residents of Vrindavan are Krishna's family. Okay? Sambandhanuga, it's called. Okay? Sambandhanuga. That's how they have the relationship, except for the gopis there. Uh, basically, Kamanuga. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to get that. You can find that information in the Nectar of Devotion, if you wish. So, anyway, so uh, he was reunited with uh, Sanatan Goswami, and Sanatan Goswami was taking him around, arranging for his cooking, arranging for his ingredients, and everything like that. And one time he saw Sanatan Goswami with a reddish... Uh, cloth wrapped around his head and that cloth had been offered to Sanatan Goswami by Mukunda Saraswati you know who was basically another sannyasi probably was a Mayavadi sannyasi but I don't know for sure and then Jagadanda Pandit asked Sanatan Goswami who was giving you the cloth he thought that cloth came from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sanatan Goswami was honoring the remnants of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by having the cloth on his head however when Sanatana Goswami revealed who had given it to him, Jagadananda Pandit got really angry, picked up a cooking pot, basically they hit Sanatana Goswami, because he didn't hit Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami said, yes, I just took up this cloth on my head just to test your love, to see how much you love Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and to see your anger. So Sanatana Goswami got out of trouble very, very quickly by talking about that. And so, here they are, they're taking prasadam. So, let's continue with this narration about Jagannanda Pandit and Sanatana Goswami. Text 62, <coughs> Anjalila chapter 13. Pakakari Jagannanda Chaitanya Samar Pila 
Dvijana Vasitave Prasada Paila. When Jagannanda Panda finished cooking, he offered the food to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then he and Sanatana Goswami sat down and ate the prasadam. Prasada Payam Yunye Kaila Alingana Chaitanya Virahe Dunhe Karila Krandana. After eating this prasadam, they embraced each other and cried due to separation from Lord Chaitanya. Hey, Mata Masatwi, Rahi La Vrindavane, Chaitanya Viraha Dukkha, Nayaya Sahane. They passed two months in Vrindavan in this way. Finally, they could no longer tolerate the unhappiness of separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu Sandesha Kahila Sanatane, Amiha Asite Chirahite Karihaika Stane. Jagananda Pandit therefore gave Sanatana Goswami the message from the Lord, I am also coming to Vrindavana. Please arrange a place for me to stay. Jagadananda Pandita Tave Adna Amagila Sanatana Prabhure Kichu Vetavastu Dila When Sanatana Goswami granted permission for Jagadananda to return to Jagannath Puri, Sanatana gave Jagadananda some gifts for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Listen, listen to these gifts. Pretty nice gifts. Rasa Stalira Valu Aragovan Govardhanera Shila Shushka Pakka Pilupalla Aragunja Mala. The gifts consisted of some sand from the site of the Rasa Lila, a stone from Govardhan Hill, dry ripened pilu fruits, and a garland of small conch shells, of course. The garland of small conch shells that's referred to here is not actually conch shells. They're called gunjamala, it says. Gunjamala is like little berries, red and white berries. And those berries represent Srimati Radharani. Jagarananda Pandita Chalila Sabalana Vyakula Haila Sanatana Tanre Vidaya Diya Thus, Jagannanda Pandit, bearing all these gifts, started on his journey. Sanatana Goswami, however, was very much agitated after bidding him farewell because he was missing his association and he was missing the association of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhura Nimitke Kastana Male Vicharila Dwadasha Dichatilaya Eka Mata Paila. Soon afterward, Sanatana Goswami selected a place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could stay while in Vrindavan. It was a temple on the hill named Dwarasha Dicha. So, Dwarasha Dicha Tila. Tila means, of course, hill. So, there's an interesting reason why that hill has the name Dwarasha Dicha. Uh, Dwarasha means 12, and Adicha means sun, and Tila means hill or mound. So, the reason it's called that is that once upon a time, over 5,000 years ago, Krishna was in Vrindavan. And when Krishna was in Vrindavan, there was a terrible snake with many heads. His name was Kaliya. And Kali was poisoning the Yamuna River. And so Krishna had to dive into the Yamuna River and ultimately kick Kaliya's heads and even dance on Kaliya's heads and teach him a lesson and send Kaliya away so he wouldn't poison and not only Kaliya and the reason actually Krishna gave the mercy to Kaliya by dancing on his heads was that Kaliya's wives the Nagapatnis actually were great devotees of Krishna and they begged for their husband's forgiveness and for their husband to have the blessings of Krishna and therefore, Krishna kicked his head. So it's actually kind of nice getting your head kicked. Actually, any time someone comes in touch with Krishna's lotus feet or a devotee's lotus feet, one gets great spiritual benefit. I was just listening to a class that Srila Prabhupada was given, giving, where Prabhupada mentions in the story of Gajendra Mokshana. Gajendra, of course, was an elephant. And he was a devotee. Previously, he would he was King Indradunya. I guess the same King Indradunya of the Jagannath pastime. So anyway, so he was King Indradunya, who had gotten courage to become an elephant. And uh, the crocodile 
attacked him in the water. He was a great devotee. And the crocodile attacked him in the water by biting on his foot. <laughs> and therefore, the crocodile got liberated because he got the foot dust. I guess the blood, too. Of a great pure devotee. And Gajendra got liberated because he prayed to the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord came down to save him and chopped off the head of the crocodile. And that's why the crocodile got liberated. But he had taken the foot dust or the mercy of the feet. That's quite an interesting story. The mercy of the feet of someone who he was trying to eat. Even I was like that. The mercy of the feet of someone he was trying to eat. Interesting story. So anyway, so let's talk about this Dwadatatitya Tila. So, getting back to the point, Krishna was kicking the heads of the Kaliya serpent, and after this Kaliya serpent decided, I'm out of here, and he became a great devotee, he had the footprints of Krishna on his head, Krishna got out of the water. But somehow or other, it was very cold in the Yamuna, and very cold outside, so Krishna started shivering. You know, sometimes if you get very cold after taking a cold shower, I don't know how many of you take cold showers, and it's cold outside, you actually start shaking and shivering. Of course, Krishna doesn't have a material body. Remember that. Krishna has a spiritual body, so his shivering was actually to bring uh, the concern of the devotees uh, as to his welfare. To bring the devotees or have the devotees become more attached to him and concerned with him like the gopis were very concerned when Krishna was going to the pasturing ground and uh, he wasn't wearing shoes and so was Mother Yashoda very concerned like that but obviously Krishna doesn't feel pain so at least not that type of pain he feels separation from his devotees perhaps that type of pain so anyway so Krishna got out and he was shivering so he went to this top of this hill and at the top of the hill, which later on became known as Dwadasaditya, the sun shone forth with 12 times its normal heat and brilliance. So that's why it's called Dwadasaditya Hill. And this is the hill on which Sanatana Goswami established the temple of Madan Mohan. And it's also the hill from which Sanatana Goswami was able to see that a boat with Chanda that was stuck in the Yamuna River and the uh, captain of the boat and the owner of the boat were able to come to him and beg for the mercy of Madame Mohan and later on because they got the mercy of Madame Mohan the boat was set free it floated up because of some water and they built the temple the Mad Madame Mohan temple very beautiful temple on Dwadasaditya Tila there's also another story that Sanatan Goswami uh, was digging a well there and of course as you all know that most of the uh, groundwater there is quite salty but he dug a well and the water by Krishna's mercy uh, became uh, pure and not salty amazing anyway and that's right up there and you can go up to that hill right now which is right next to the temple his Bhajan Kutir is right next to the temple. And you can actually take some of the water from the sweet well of Sanatana Goswami. And Madan Mohan originally resided there before there was a temple. There's hanging from one of the trees there. So I'm not going to tell that whole story about Madan Mohan right now. But let's continue. Seistana Rakila Goshani Samskara Kariya Matereya Kila Ekachoni Vandiya. Sanatan Goswami kept the temple very clean and in good repair. In front of it, he erected a small hut. Shigura Chale Nila Chale Gela Jagananda Vakta Saha Goshani Haila Parama Ananda. Meanwhile, traveling very quickly, Jagananda Pandit soon arrived in Jagannapuri, much to the joy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees. Prabhura Charanavandi Sapari Milila Mahaprabhu Tanre Drida Alingada Kaila. After offering prayers at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
Jagadananda Panda greeted everyone then. The Lord embraced Jagadananda very strongly. Sanatana Arename Panita Dandavat Kaila Rasastali Raduliari Sabaveta Kitila Jagananda Panda offered obeisance to the Lord on behalf of Sanatana Goswami. Then he gave the Lord the dust from the side of the Rasa dance, along with the other gifts. Remember, the other gifts were the Govardhan, Shila, and the Gunjamala, the red and white berries, uh, which are usually used in the worship of Govardhan. And actually, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu later on uh, put that Gunjamala around his neck, and he used to hold the Govardhan Shila and put it to his head. And later on, he gave that Govardhan Shila and the Gunjamala to Raghunath Das Goswami, as we read previously. Sabadravya Raki Lena, Piludi Lena Bantiya, Vandavanera Palabala, Bali, Kailaj Krishtahana. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept all the gifts except the Pilu fruits, which he distributed to the devotees. Because the fruits were from Vrindavan, everyone ate them with great happiness. But there was a problem with those fruits. Ye keha jane anti tushite lagila ye na jane gorya pilu chavana kaila. Those devotees who were familiar with pilu fruits sucked on the seeds, but the Bengali devotees who do not know what they were chewed the seeds and swallowed them. Ooh, poor guys. Mukhe tara jala gela jiwa kare jwala Vrindavanera pilu kaite e ekalila The hot chili-like taste burned the tongues of those who chewed the seeds. Thus the eating of pilu fruits from Vrindavan became a pastime of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's. Jagadandera gamhane sabaro lasa he mati nila chile prabhura vilasa when Jagadanda Panda returned from Vrindavana, everyone was jubilant. Thus Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoyed his pastimes while residing at Jagannath Puri. Ekadina Prabhu Yameshra Tota Yaitaye Se Kali Deva Dasi Akila Gaite. Now, this is another very, very interesting story. Extremely interesting. Write this down. Okay. One day, when the Lord was going to the temple of Yameshra, a female singer began to sing in the Jagannath temple. So, in these temples, they had female singers, female dancers, Devadasis, they were the dancers and the singers. And usually, they were just singing for the pleasure of the deities. It's not that they would generally put on a performance for everyone else. Gujari Ragini Lanath Sumadura Sware Gita Govinda Pada Gaya Jagamana Hare. She sang a Gujari tune in a very sweet voice, and because the subject was Jaidev Goswami's Gita Govinda, the song attracted the attention of the entire world. Dure Gana Shuni Prabhura Haila Havesha. Sri Purusha Kegaya Najane Vishesha. Hearing the song from a distance, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately became ecstatic. He did not know whether it was a man or a woman singing. In other words, he was going to practically run up to and maybe embrace the person who was singing. And he didn't know it was a lady. Tari Mila Pare Prabhu Aveshe Daila Pati Shi Jaravari Haya Putia Chalila. As the Lord ran in ecstasy to meet the singer, thorny, he thorny hedges pricked his body. He was so enthusiastic he didn't notice that he was going through thorns. Ange kanta lagila kichu na janila ashtivya stigovinda tanra pachete dhila. Govinda ran very quickly behind the Lord who did not feel any pain from the pricking of the thorns. So Govinda wanted to stop him, obviously, because he was aware that Lord Jaitanya was going to just run up there. 
Dana yaye na prabhu, Sri Ache Alpha Dure, Sri Gaya Vali Govinda Prabhu Re Kaila Kule. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was running very rapidly, and the girl was only a short distance away. Just then Govinda caught the Lord in his arms and cried, It's a woman saying Sri Nama Shuni Prabhura Payaha Hila Punarapi Se Pati Bahudi Chalila. As soon as he heard the word woman, the Lord became externally conscious and turned back. Because obviously it's prohibited for a sannyasi to embrace a woman. You know. He basically wanted to embrace the person who was singing so nicely, as Lord Chaitanya did with many of his associates. But sannyasis have these restrictions, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was observing as a perfect sannyasi. Prabhu Kai Gomanaji, Rakilaji Vana, Sri Parashahai Lama Rahaita Marana. My dear Govindi said, You have saved my life. If I had touched the body of a woman, I would certainly have died. It's not, it's not any prejudice against women. It's actually Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's really determination to set the best example as of a sannyasi. Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu insisted upon doing that. I shall never be able to repay my debt to you. Govinda replied, Lord Jagannath has saved you. I am insignificant. So Govinda is also expressing his uh, great humility. Not that, oh, I saved you. You know, he's thinking Krishna made the arrangement. Prabhukai Govinda Mora Sange Rakiva Yahantahan Mora Rakshaya Savadana Hiva. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, My dear Govinda, you should stay with me always. There is danger any, everywhere, or anywhere and everywhere. Therefore, you should protect me very carefully. Etabali Luti Prabhu Gela Nijasthane Shuni Mahabhaya Ahila Sarupadi Mane. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned home when Sarup Damodar Goswami and the Lord's other attendants heard about the incident. They became very much afraid. Very much afraid because they could see that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstasy was becoming uncontrolled. Of course, Lord Chaitanya is in the platform Mahabhav, being in the mood of Srimati Radharani. So, uncontrolled ecstasy, Vyavachari, Vava, ecstasy, start. Sattvik of Bhava ecstasies. Eta tapana mishra putra raganatha bhata charya prabhuri dekitik chalila chari sarva karya. During this time, Raghunath bhata charya, the son of Tapan Mishra, gave up all his duties and left home, intending to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, of course, Raghunath bhata charya basically. Uh, took care of Tapan Mishra and took care of his mother and he was told by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take care of them because they were pure devotees and he said after you finish taking care of them, in other words after they leave this world you should come to see me and don't get married. That was the instruction from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Kashi, uh, actually they were from Kashi, that's true. Kashi hai te chale la te no gaurapata dia Sange Sipika Chale Tanra Jale Vahiya. Accompanied by a servant carrying his baggage, Raghunath Bhatta started from Varanasi and traveled along the path leading through Bengal. Pate Tare Milila Vishvasa Ramadasa Vishvasa Kanara Kayasta Teno Rajara Vishvasa. In Bengal he met Raman, a Ramadas Vishvasa who belonged to the Kayasta caste. He was one of the king's secretaries. So the word uh, Vishwasa Kanara Kayashta indicate a secretary or clerk belonging to the Kayashta caste. Kayashtas were usually secretaries, the kings, governors, or other important persons. It is said that anyone working in the government secretary at, this, at that time was a Kayashta. Generally, they were considered Chudra caste too. Sarva Shastra Pravina. Kavya Prakasha Dya Paka Parama Vaishnava Raghunatha Upasaka Ramadas Vishvasha 
was very learned in all the revealed scriptures. He was a teacher of the famous book, Kavya Prakasha, and was known as an advanced devotee and worshipper of Raghunath, Lord Ramchandra. Commenting on the word Parma Vaishnava, Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur says that anyone who desires to merge into the existence of the Lord cannot be a pure Vaishnava, that, but that because Ramdas Vishvasa was a great devotee of Lord Ramchandra, he was almost a Vaishnava. So even almost the Vaishnava is considered a great Vaishnava. In those days, no one could distinguish between a pure Vaishnava and a pseudo Vaishnava. Therefore, Ram Dasa Vishwasa was known as a Vaishnava because he worshipped Lord Ramchandra. It's called Vaishnava Praya. He's not quite a Vaishnava, and according to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he had some impersonal tendencies. Ashtaprahara Rama Nama. Japena Ratri Dine, Sarvatyagi Chalila Jaganatha Tarashane. Ramdas had renounced everything, was going to see Lord Jagannath. While traveling, he chanted the holy name of Lord Rama 24 hours a day. But his mood in chanting was not the mood of a pure Vaishnava. So sometimes we find impersonalists there chanting so many mantras, but their mood is to merge into the Lord. That's Jnana, or their mood is they want something from the Lord. That's karma. And pure devotional service is anyabhilasya tashinyam jnana karma and apratam is devoid of the desire for fruit of gain or for liberation. Raganatha patera sane patete milila patera jali mate kare vahiya chalila when he met Raghunath Bhatta on the way, he took Raghunath Das's baggage on his head and carried it. Nana seva kari kare pada samvahana tati Raghunath dera kaya sankuchita mana. Ram Das served Raghunath, Raghunath Bhatta in various ways, even massaging his legs. Raghunath Bhatta felt some hesitation in accepting all this service because he was a humble Vaishnava. Tumi bada loka. Pandita Maha Bhagavate Seva Nakiriya Suke Chalamora Sate. You are a respectable gentleman, a learned scholar, and a great devotee, Raghunath Bhatt said. Please do not try to serve me. Just come with me in a happy mood. Ramadasa Kahe Amishudra Dhamma Ramanera Seva Hemora Nija Dharma. Ramdas replied, I am a Shudra, a fallen soul. To serve a Brahmin is my duty and religious principle. Sankocha na kara tumi ami tumara dasa tumara seva kadila haya vidaye ulasa. Therefore, please do not be hesitant. I am your servant, and when I serve you, my heart becomes jubilant. Wow. Eta bali juale vahena karena sevane. Raganathera Tadaka Mantra Japena Ratri Dine. Thus Ram Das carried the baggage of Raganath Bhatt and served him sincerely. He constantly chanted the holy name of Lord Ramachandra day and night. Wow. Emati Raganatha Haila Nilachale Prabhura Charanayana Milila Kutu Hale. Traveling in this way, Raghunath Bhatt soon arrived at Jagannath Puri. There he met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with great delight and fell at his lotus feet. Dana Paranama Kari Bhattakwadila Charane Prabhu Raghunatha Jani Kaila Lingane Raghunath Bhatt fell straight as a rod at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then the Lord embraced him, knowing well who he was. Mishrara Shekharera Dhanavachana Ila Mahaprabhu Tansavara Varta Puchila Raghunath offered respectful obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on behalf of Tapan Mishra and Chandra Shekhara, and the Lord also inquired about them. Balaha Ila Aila Deka Kamala Lochana Ajiyamara Eta Kariva Prasada Bhojana It is very good that you have come here, the Lord said. Now go see the lotus-eyed Lord Jagannath. Today you will accept prasadam here by place. Govindere kahi eka vasadeo yaila 
Surupadi Bhaktagana Sanayami Lai La. The Lord asked Govinda to arrange for Raghunath Bhatta's accommodations and then introduced him to all the devotees, headed by Surup Namadar Goswami. Emata Prabhu Sange Rahila Shta Masa Dine 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 Prabhura Kripaya Vadaye Ulasa. I guess after this he went back home. Then he went to Vrindavan after his parents passed away. That's right. Thus Raghunath Bhatta lived with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continuously for eight months, and by the Lord's mercy he felt increasing transcendental happiness every day. Maje Maje Mahaprabhura Karena Nimantra Na. Karabhata Karena Ara Vivida Vyanjana. He would periodically cook rice with various vegetables and invite Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home. Raghunatha Bhatta Pake Ati Sudhi Puna Ye Rande Se Haya Amritera Sama. Raghunatha Bhatta was an expert cook. Whatever he prepared tasted just like nectar. He's a Rasika. Parama Santoshi Prabhu Karena Bojana Prabhu Rav Ha Shishta Patra Patera Vakshana Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would accept with great satisfaction all the food he prepared. After the Lord was satisfied, Raghunath Bhatt would eat his remnants. Ramadas Yari Pratama Prabhuri Vilila Mahaprabhu Adika Tanre Kripana Karila when Ramdas Vishvasha met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord did not show him any special mercy, although this was their first meeting, because he was a Mayavadi, basically. Antare Mamukshu Teno Vijayagaravan Sarvachita Yata Prabhu Savagya Bhalavan. Within his heart, Ramdas Ramdas of Ishvalasho was an impersonalist who desired to merge into the existence of the Lord, and he was very proud of his learning. Since Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the omniscient supreme personality of Godhead, he can understand the heart of everyone, and thus he knew all those things. Wow. Ramadas Kaila Tave Nilachale Vasa Patanaya Kagoshtike Padaya Kavya Prakasha. Ramadas Vishvasha then took up residence in Jayalapuri and taught the Kavya Prakasha to the Patanayaka family of the descendants of Bhavananda Roy. Ashtamasa Rahi Prabhu Vati Vidaya Dila Vivaha Nakariya Bali Nishela Karila. After eight months, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bade farewell to Raghunath Bhatt, the Lord flatly forbade him to marry. Do not marry, the Lord said. So Raghunath Bhattacharya had become a greatly advanced devotee while still unmarried. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could see this and therefore he advised him not to begin the process of material sense gratification. Marriage is the concession for people who are unable to control their senses. Raghunath, however, being an advanced devotee of Krishna, naturally had no desire for sense gratification. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised him not to enter the bondage of marriage. Generally, a person cannot make much advancement in spiritual consciousness if he is married, but if he dedicates his life to Krishna, he can. It's not an impediment. He becomes attached to his family and is prone to sense gratification. Thus, his spiritual advancement is very slow or almost nil. On the other hand, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed his household disciples, just stay where you are and serve Krishna and serve the Vaishnava. So the household the order of life is an ideal situation for serving other Vaishnavas, bringing people to Krishna consciousness, especially now in Kali Yuga. So, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Manasadeha Geha Yogishumor Apilamtuyapati Nandakashore, that if one has the right consciousness, then understanding everything belongs to Nandakashore. Nandakashore means Krishna. Uh, Krishna is a young boy who is the son of Anna Maharaj. Then, Manasadeha Geha, your mind, your body, you, uh, words, Nanda Kishore, everything is yours. Harpilum to your party, Nanda Kishore. So that is the right consciousness. And then there's no impediment for any order of life. I mean, there's many impediments to being a sannyasi because people appreciate you, they worship you, they say nice things about you, they bow down to you. And that can be an impediment too. In fact, that's described as one of the causes of inertas, how one 
gets appreciation, profit, adoration, distinction, which is subtle sex life, after one advances in devotional service. This is quite dangerous. Vrida mata pitara yai karaha se vana vaishnava pasha bhagavata kara adhyayana. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Raghunath Bhatta, when you return home, serve your aged father and mother who are devotees and try to study Srimad Bhagavatam from a pure Vaishnava who has realized God. In other words, at that time, Raghunath Das's father and mother were still alive. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not want to take uh, Raghunath Bhatta from his family because Raghunath Bhatta's family was a family of pure devotees. And we contrast that with Raghunath Das Goswami's family, uh, Govardhan and Haranya, who were Vaishnava Prayas, almost devotees, and respected. You know, they served the devotees, but they were not good association because they were interested in material enjoyment and devotional service. Whereas uh, <clears throat> Raghunath Bhatta Goswami's family was interested in pure devotional service and seeing Lord and serving Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Tapan Mishra. One should note how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of God, advised Raghunath Bhatta Acharya to learn Srimad Bhagavatam. He advised him to understand Srimad Bhagavatam not from a professional man, but from a real Bhagavata devotee. He also advised Raghunath Bhatta to serve his mother and father because they were both Lord Chaitanya's devotees. Anyone who wishes to advance in Krishna consciousness must try to serve the devotees of Krishna. Really important principle. Uh, one of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's most important principles, which, of course, the most important is uh, Nama Ruchi, but another one is Vaishnava Seva, and another one is Jiva Doya. These are, to me, these are the most important principles. Of course, you know, we have the four regular principles, but that, that's not what I'm talking about, the positive principles. Nama Ruchi, having a taste for the holy name, uh, and Vaishnava Seva serving the Vaishnavas and Jiva Doya being compassionate to the Jivas. As Naratamadas Thakur says, Chariya Vaishnava Seva Vishtara Peche Keva. Without serving the self realized Vaishnava, no one has ever been released from the materialistic way of life. Very important. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have never advised Raghunath Bhatta to serve ordinary parents, but since his parents were Vaishnavas, the Lord advised him to serve them. One might ask, why shouldn't ordinary parents, parents be served? As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, this gets a little heavy. 5.5.18. Uh, this, of course, is the Lord Rishabhade of speaking. Guru Nasashat Swajano Nasashat Pita Nasashat Jananhi Nasashat Daivam Natashat Napatishya Chachan Namochi Adyasam Apetya Vichyam. One cannot deliver. Who cannot deliver his dependence from the path of birth and death should never become a spiritual master, relative, father, or mother, or a worshipable demigod, nor should such a person become a husband. Everyone naturally gets a father and mother at the time of birth, but the real father and mother are those who can release their offspring from the clutches of imminent death. This is possible only for parents advanced in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, any parent who cannot enlighten their offspring in Krishna consciousness cannot be accepted as a real father and mother. The following verse from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 1 2 200, confirms the uselessness of serving ordinary parents. Very heavy. Loki kivai te kivapi, ya kriya kriya te mune, hari sevanu kulaiva, sakariya vaktim ichata. One should perform only those activities either worldly or prescribed by Vedic rules and regulations which are favorable for the cultivation of Krishna consciousness. Concerning the study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu clearly advises that one should avoid hearing from a non Vaishnava professional reciter. In this connection, Sanatana Goswami quotes a verse from the Padma Purana A Vaishnava Mukodhyanam Bhutam Hadikatam Tam Shabhanam Naiva Kartavyam Sharpa Shistiyatarapayam. See how much long it is. This is a long purpose. Oh no, we'll finish it up. No one should hear or take lessons from a person who is not a Vaishnava, but even if he speaks about Krishna, such a lesson should not be accepted for his like milk touched by the lips of a serpent. Nowadays it is fashionable to observe Bhagavat Saptaha and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from persons who are anything but advanced devotees or self-realized souls. There are even many Mayavadis 
who read Srimad Bhagavatam to throngs of people. Many Mayavadis have recently begun reciting Srimad Bhagavatam in Vrindavan, and because they can present the Bhagavatam with word jugglery, twisting the meaning by grammatical tricks, materialistic persons who go to Vrindavan as a matter of spiritual fashion like to hear from them. All this is clearly forbidden by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We should note carefully that since these Mayavadis cannot personally know the meaning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, they can never deliver others by reciting it. On the other hand, an advanced devotee of the Lord is free from material bondage. He personifies Srimad Bhagavatam in life and action. Therefore, we advise that anyone who wants to learn Srimad Bhagavatam must approach such a realized soul. So we went up to uh, text 113 in the 13th chapter. Okay. So now we will allow you all to ask some questions. Let me unmute this. Okay, who has some questions? Oh, okay. okay, just a quick question from you, because you're always asking questions. What's uh, up? Okay, uh, I got two questions. Uh, you talk about a subtle sex life. So what is subtle sex life and what are the countermeasures to this? Subtle sex life is profit, adoration, distinction, according to Srila Prabhupada that one wants to uh, profit, in other words, have people admire him, uh, 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 admire him as being something very special, to worship him, to think he's different from anyone else, to think he's better from everyone else. That's subtle sex life. To be praised, one wants to be praised, profit, adoration, distinction, be given gifts because he's so good. Uh, and that's false pride. That's subtle sex life. Okay. What are the countermeasures go there? The who? What are the countermeasures? How do you stop it? Countermeasures serving a Vaishnava. Thinking oneself, Trinada be sinuichena thoro eva sihishana manina manadena kirtaniya sadari. And if someone praises you, you think that this is simply uh, they're seeing Krishna's actions, or they're seeing the mercy of your spiritual master. That's what they're, that's how you counteract it. Okay, thank you, Rakesh. So, let's let someone else, whoops, who else has a question? Usually Rishikesh has a question. Chitralaika, okay, why don't you ask your question? Hello, Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Um, Gurudev, uh, well, Regarding this, um, like taking care of parents that are not Krishna conscious, yeah. I was I was thinking, and uh, we recently were commemorating uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and uh, well, a message from him that I I always take, like, well, I, I like that message is that uh, if we do not, if we are not kind towards all the jivas, we can we cannot develop um, devotional service, and he talks about giving well taking care of jiva of everyone um giving even he mentions medicines um clothes everything so so if we for example if my parents are not krishna conscious and and they get sick and i i don't know if for example if i was in a temple serving um and i need to go and and help them i mean how how can that be not um devotional service that's actually a really interesting question you ask uh, we help help them without giving up our devotional service and we serve them in a krishna conscious way now the restriction on serving is doing what they tell us to do you understand okay yes yeah. just like you know, I served my mother by joining the Krishna Conscious Movement and actually sending, arranging that she would hear the holy names at the final moments of her life. So, but if I served her doing what she wanted me to do, I would not be sitting here today. I would be at the university as a professor or some scientist somewhere <laughs> and, or doctor or some or, or dead, one of the, <laughs> these things like that. 
So, uh, so we, we have this service attitude towards all living entities, but that doesn't mean, it's not the same thing as serving the pure Vaishnava. When we serve a Vaishnava, a pure Vaishnava, we do what they say. And when we serve someone who is not, we do what's best for them. There's a difference. And we don't give up our service for Krishna. All right, we don't give it up. All right? Thank you. Yes, we did it. Thank you. So that, that's a clear distinction. So thank you for asking that question to, to, make, that, uh, to make that point. It's actually an interesting question. Trisha Case, I know you have a question. Yes, Kajay. Thank you. May I wish you uh, My question is, you know, uh, people like us, you know, I mean, for myself, uh, we serve Krishna in our reverence, obviously, you know, as Lakshmi Nara, you know. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I want to be a resident of Guluk Vindavan also, where the Lord is not worshipping that. Uh, Owen reverence is like more intimate. So right. for an extra, you know, like an outsider like me, how can I develop that intimate mood uh, while I cannot artificially, you know, uh, do an intimate uh, relationship with Krishna? It will be a sahaja, you know. I can only through go through Owen reverence. Uh, well, right now, of course, that's an interesting question about the various stages of bhakti, you know, we have uh, sadhana bhakti, and sadhana bhakti has uh, two different stages. There is uh, bhakti, which is rules and regulations, which we follow, and there's raganuga. Uh, raganuga, one is not controlled by the rules and regulations, but one follows the rules and regulations. But in Rad raganuga, we actually uh, try to become attracted to particular residents of Vrindavan and hear more. So if you so the answer to your question is if you actually want to go back to Golok Vrindavan rather than to the Vaikuntha planets, which is probably a good idea, then you should hear more and more about Golok Vrindavan. Particularly we have Prabhupada's books like Nectar of Devotion and Krishna Book and read the stories about Golok Vrindavan and Krishna's pastimes in Golok Vrindavan. And then natural attraction will develop in your heart and serve those who are worshiping in, in that particular mood and also uh serve radha galokananda who i can see in your background <laughs> <laughs> and so they are definitely in that mood in the vrindavan mood so if you if you serve them like that you will definitely develop that intense desire that lolium or intense desire uh will develop in your heart so the price of pure devotional service or the price of entering into the vrindavan is lolium or intense desire and the only way to wake that up because it's there but the only way to wake it up is to associate uh, with great devotees through hearing transcendental sound vibration and serving great devotees especially as divine grace to the Prabhupada and your spiritual master uh it's only this bhakti true maharaj so that's that's our secret Okay, so one final question from Madhava. You can unmute yourself. Well, Nandra from Gurudev. So I just have one just little comment. It was an interesting question from that devotee lady from Latin America, I believe. Uh, yeah. But I loved your answer. It was so perfect. Actually, that a very, very, very important question because everywhere we hear, yeah, yeah although they are, our parents are birth parents, but they still they need to be served. It's very important because they are first guru in our life. So, yes. so you you said so nice. I never heard this first time. It's beautiful, very excellent. To I, that's what to my knowledge is used. If there is some material need, they have gotten old or whatnot. So, what? So you just see their need and help them. But real service is by talking about Krishna, giving. They trying to give them Krishna, so they become Krishna conscious. So you don't do to them a kind of service what they ask you to do, but a Vaishnava, what he asks you do, is just opposite and a beautiful answer. This is. So perfect. I love this answer. I, I first time got so clear answer to this often asked question, but it's a very important question. Yeah, otherwise, sometimes people say, hey, you are no good. Uh, you, you neglected you neglect your parents, X, Y, Z, but you gave perfect example how you served your uh, kind of your mother. 
and, and this is how this that is that is this is the way to that i really like that thank you so much for <laughs> that answer it was so nice thank you mara thank you. all right so we are going to end now so it's time to end and then we'll see everybody tomorrow evening thank you all for joining us and this is my favorite time of the day super enlivening time for me to read Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes and in this way I'm in touch with Srila Prabhupada and in touch with uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami and in touch with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all these great devotees I'm reading about so thank you all glories to Zavai Grace Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Oh no, someone just had a question. If we preach to parents, then it becomes a difficult situation how to deal with it. No. Don't preach to your parents unless they ask you about Krishna. You do what's best for your parents, Krishna conscious-wise. I never said preach to your parents. If your parents ask to, for it, then you give it to them. But it requires some discrimination. You do whatever is best to help your parents come closer to Krishna and you take care of your parents in this way and don't neglect your parents. If your parents were pure devotees, then whatever your parents ask for you do. There's a, that's the difference. So, that's the question Radha, 